All right. Hey, folks, welcome back. Uh, this is the artificial life creation count up. Uh, we are at T plus four and sinking. If we're supposed to be swimming, kind of sinking. Uh, um, <laughs> multicellularity is hard. Uh, uh, that I have struggled a lot uh, this month. Um, enough so that I'm wondering a little bit about whether I can even really do this uh, or do this in certainly any kind of finite time. You know, I, you look at that natural evolution, the Cambrian explosion uh, was this, you know, half a billion years ago when over a relatively small period of time, 10 or 20 million years, uh, uh, there was obviously a architectural breakthrough in uh, multicellularity that allowed uh, multicellularity to take hold and then go crazy. Uh, um, and, you know, <clears throat> I love the Cambrian explosion. I think it's, it's super fascinating. But, you know, as far as what I'm concerned with here, uh, half a billion years ago is not the number that's important. What's important for me now is that, you know, here's the earliest multicellular life fungi possibility about a billion and a half years ago, but single cell life is more like four billion years ago. So there's something like two and a half billion years that I'm supposed to be saying I'm going to do in six months or some kind of analog to it. A, 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 little, bit of, a little bit of pride, a little bit of hubris, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Uh, so can I do this? I don't know. Well, um, I show you what I got. I made progress, but it was it was tough. It hurt. The development process is painful. I mean, I had other things that were kind of fun, but man. Uh, uh, so okay, here we are. Uh, all right, let's try looking at uh, this is a uh, this is the state of the art. Uh, if folks that have been familiar with this, this is a whole new kind of cell membrane. Uh, uh, looks kind of like a chip now with little leads sticking out instead of all that sort of brown goo, intercellular goo. The intercellular goo is gone. Uh, uh, I was trying to get more precision uh, for how they register with each other and be able to send more information, uh, not more information, but more accurate information through. And, you know, this at the moment, I've lost a whole bunch of other behaviors, so this thing doesn't know how to change direction or lose any fins or so on and so forth. That was the big success. Uh, um, and so, and again, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with my buttons, I did not look into them. Uh, um, and okay, so where were we supposed to be today? Uh, we were supposed to have clean living fish. No, <laughs> well, I mean, they're kind of clean only because they don't do much stuff. Second species started, no way, not even close. And uh, I am increasingly resigned, not to say happy, uh, uh, to think about um, it being, the multicellular menagerie will be uh, uh, all about the fish. <laughs> if there's any little uh, happy mushroom or something, that would be great. Second half plan, I have some ideas. More big fun. You know, when I put aside <laughs> the development stuff, uh, you know, uh, April was good in a lot of ways. Uh, uh, stuff with friends and family was good. Uh, uh, and uh, stuff with uh, uh, other things were good. So let's just push into it. Good and bad. Uh, okay, uh, robustness demo. Oh yeah, and so this happened. I mean, so the previous fish with the intercellular goo that have all kinds of terrible problems, they've been running on the grid for all of April basically. Uh, uh, and here's a little sample of it. Uh, uh, oops, and if I could just try to figure out how to get the correct button here. All right, here we go. Uh, um, and folks that were watching the live stream, they were seeing the April run on the thing. Look at that. Uh, uh, Lotus 2, the power supply failed. It didn't fail hard to zero. It failed to like 6 volts when it was supposed to be 12 volts. And all of these tiles up in Lotus 2 just went nuts. Uh, uh, I bought a new, I, I sprung for a mean well. This is thing. oh, and this is nice. I soldered the connections on and I put the wrong gender on. So, okay, but but now it is, uh, now we're getting 11 and a half volts and so forth. And, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, but this thing survived. Uh, uh, it, uh, Lotus 2 crashed, it, it didn't lose itself, 
uh, it kept on going. It was down for a day or more. Uh, uh, well, actually, several days because I ordered a new power supply and so on. Uh, um, and w eventually, I stuck a new power supply in, and uh, it actually came back up. Uh, I, I don't want to claim anything for it because I think it was luck in most purposes. But hey, that's what was supposed to happen. <laughs> Uh, the, the tile, you know, grid so big, uh, matrix so big that parts of it are always failing, you know, uh, like that. So anyway, all right. So now, uh, yikes. Uh, um, so the schedule uh, supposed to be. Uh, this is almost identical to last month's schedule, which is uh, as far as uh, progress, which is a little scary. I've called increased code density. I've greened that out because I think uh, that is not a problem for what we're currently doing. Uh, having the, we can get enough. You know, in fact, I've stuck a few extra instructions in and moved them around and stuff like that, and that has not been a problem. It, the existing machinery, the loader, and all that stuff takes care of it, and it's good. Uh, uh, coordinated mo movement. Movement. Well, you saw it's it's hard there. And junctions and intercellular signal were supposed to be the topic uh, for this month. And in fact, that is uh, where I ended up going. Uh, and we'll talk about it right now, I guess. So yeah. So membranes 2.0. Um, you know, part of this whole project of trying to build a whole new computational stack. Uh, um, is one of the hardest parts of it is when you actually succeed at some given level and now you're supposed to go and build on top of that it's just like when i was in grad school and you know the older grad students when i was in graduate school they were working on parallel computers the, the faculty and hardware students were building new parallel computers or exploring it it was the new stuff and there were other graduate students that were doing parallel software and what all of us little munchkins learned the new grad students learned from this it's, is that you don't let your thesis depend on somebody else's thesis because the software parallel software guys were getting really uh, folks were really getting screwed by this whole thing because the hardware stuff wasn't working they were changing it out from underneath them and it was terrible and that's what i've done to myself here right uh, i've built uh, my, our own hardware uh, got our own programming language our own compiler and then this giant mountain of ulam code that just to get the diamond matrix going uh, uh and so on so you know you yeah, okay, maybe I was a little glib, a little bit easier. And as I said last time, um, the the design, you know, and this is, again, the same thing. You know, my thesis, depending on my previous thesis, it currently takes eight minutes to build the software uh, from standing start because it builds from a standing start each time. It doesn't have any incremental compilation facility. And anybody who's a programmer knows that the amount of time it takes to make a tiny change and then try again has a tremendous impact on how much productivity you're going to end up getting. And an eight minute loop is tough. It's really tough. Uh, um, so nonetheless, uh, uh, where we got to last time was the uh, whole idea of sending signals from a controller near the center of the diamond out to the edge to say, you know, what is out there? Do you see other diamonds uh, that, you know, if so, can you get me some information like about how big they are and exactly where they are and send that back to the center? That's the fish fin and the fish bot diamond controller. And we sort of got it working, but it was working so sloppy and terrible that the fins kept flying off. And I became convinced that what we really needed uh, was more accurate. It would be nice to have more timely, but the speed of light the speed of light on the grid, you can only go so fast. Uh, so did a whole new implementation. Uh, um, and uh, that should be chords, not cores. <laughs> uh, um, so I did something I didn't want to do. Uh, uh, the, the diamonds, the, the, the HC3 atoms that make up a diamond now have an actual absolute coordinate within relative to the diamond. There's still no absolute, absolute anything. But I had been avoiding putting an absolute chords in because it felt like a, a, a going with the, the old school thinking where I'll just lay everything out flat and then I'll have all the flexibility I need as opposed to thinking about what do you really need now? Well, I broke down, I made HC points the hard cell point and it's an absolute coordinate and I used it some I re-implemented the membrane and in particular 
Instead of saying we're going to take all our information and ship it to the center, and then it's going to decide, oh, we've got an edge over there and an edge over there, we should do this. Uh, instead, we're going to make these junctions. We're going to distribute the uh, information back to the edges or somewhere in the middle of the diamond, saying, I want to have a fish fin junction on this side. And over on the other one, it says, I want to have a fish bod junction on this side. And the fish fin and the fish, fish bod are supposed to have enough uh, information, enough knowledge to know, is this coordinate where I want it to be? How, how well are we lined up? So instead of sending the entire uh, position and orientation of neighboring edges back to the center, the junction reduces that information itself. It boils it down to a diamond stance that says for each of north, south, east, west, how much it likes or dislikes movement in that direction. So it, it reduces it all and just passes up, I would like north or west, please, and I would really like dislike south or east, or whatever it is. And the cool thing that came out about that was that uh, once I had it spread out, once I had the information spread out, four things representing liking the directions, four numbers representing disliking the directions, now it was possible to merge diamond stance signals coming from multiple edges and multiple atoms along an edge in the in the mesh in the grid without having they don't have to all go and reach the uh root and instead as soon as they see another one of their own kind they do a, a merge you know it, you want south oh i want south too you you want no east oh well i want no west and so you put it all together and it gets to the top and the and the thing at the center does very little beyond saying what's what possibilities do we still have now that there's an opportunity to move and that's what we just saw in the antenna. Oh, yeah, there's, I didn't even mention antennas here. So instead of the intercellular goo, we have these probes that stick out that get exact information. It's always outdated by the time it gets to the edge and from the edge to the junction and the junction all the way to the center. It's always outdated. But now it starts out actually site perfect. That from this side, it, that guy's center is minus 26 plus 13, whatever it happens to be. Uh, uh, all right, so uh, running a little bit long, I'm going to skip the demo now. I will come back around maybe during the uh, uh, live stream afterwards and play with it some more. Uh, uh, okay, big writing fun. So uh, we had the submission to the Artificial Life 2023 conference, uh, waiting for results uh, through most of uh, April, and, and the results are, are the paper got accepted for an oral presentation, and, and that's as good as it gets pretty much through this channel of uh, submitting a paper, so that was cool. And I have to say I had quite a bit of fun actually writing it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a programmable replicator for an indefinitely scalable machine. We demonstrate a programmable mobile self-replicator for a non-determinist. You know, there's, our, there's our jargon and so forth. Just right down to it. Um, and I felt confident uh, uh, about, you know, just say it. I don't, I don't need to puff it up. Just say exactly what happened. 20-day case study. Here it is. Uh, so on and so forth. Did a, a, a big, essentially a whole poster version for figure one. This is in the negative and so forth. And there's one and they're reproduced. And here's like a whole bunch of them where it all reproduced out uh, um, and so on. And I kind of let myself go a little bit and you know uh, uh, one's supposed to be careful so in the conclusion section for example i said uh, uh talking about uh in particular we may admire but will not uh, emulate heroic attempts to do the least possible thing use the least number of bits the least number of things because what we really want to do is be useful not to be minimal it is possible to do all computing with just nand gates but real computers don't indefinite scalability is hard enough we don't need to also tie one hand behind our back so that was being able to talk about a little hubris and everything. And indeed, uh, uh, reviewer number one really did not like <laughs> the paper. They suggested a rejection. They didn't suggest a full-throated rejection, but they had lots of problems and kept telling me I needed to do better science and so forth. I asked for that. I'm okay with it. I will not be actually traveling for this. This is going to be a hybrid thing, so we'll have to deal with it, but step by step. And all right, and, and we're at a time, but you know, I want to step back from even monthly uh, updates at the moment. So I'm saying two more updates, maybe three months apart, something like that. 
and instead I want to work on uh, coming out with a video on the Dave Ackley channel, a more approachable by more folks kind of video. Uh, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts uh, about what kind of topics might be fun, might be into it. And publishing something, we'll see. Uh, and that is it. Uh, uh, so <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you in a month. I hope to see a little better multicellularity in a month as well.